Show podcast. The show about coins and coin collecting. And not just any show. This is the number one coin collecting podcast. Going 10 years strong. Here's Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman on the Coin Show podcast. It is episode 193 of the Coin Show podcast. Let's try this again. I'm Mike. And I'm Matt. <laughs> and we're totally professional, 100% of the time. Um, on this episode of the Coin Show Podcast, uh, Matt and I will bring you the real deal on the 1877 Indian Head scent. We will talk about your coolest things and show those off. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll also handle any kind of excitement that uh, that happens within our show. I know that we have a uh, giveaway to do because it's the beginning of the month. Yes, we do. So because of that, we're going to give something away. But first, as always, the news. Mike, this is my, I can't, I say it every show, but this is like my second or third fa- most favorite part of the show now, because I have some other parts of the show that are, uh, are pretty awesome. So, uh, who is the news brought to us by tonight? You said you had a good one. If it's leaking down to your second or third favorite, I'm going to have to amp it up. I think so, so, this episode of the Coin Show Podcast is brought to you by Clocks, helping the world keep time for over eight centuries. They're versatile, they're wonderful, but uh, own more than one and you'll never really know what time it is. <laughs> Even a broken one is right cl- twice a day. But what can, what else can you say about we're clocks? Nice. I like that. That's good. Clocks. Yeah, I stumbled all over it. Maybe it's okay. Be, you know, it's fine. I'm really out, baby. It's fine. Yeah. So, in the news tonight, uh, David Ryder has resigned as director of the United States Mint. I saw this. Big news. And while it's easy to dance around and say, hooray, right, I think it might be short-sighted to lay all the problems at the U.S. Mint at his feet. Uh, I so, mean, yeah. In his favor, right? I was unaware that this was his second term as Mint Director. I didn't know that. Yeah, he also served under President George Herbert W. Bush uh, from nine uh, from uh, September of 92 until uh, November of 93. And I don't believe that this first term was riddled with controversy. But, you know, some of the issues he was dealt were far from his own doing. He was not only uh, able to keep the U.S. Mint running throughout the pandemic. Right but was able to increase coin production while creating a safe work environment for mint workers. He also managed to keep bullion coin production at a level that supported markets to varying degrees. Ryder was also present at major coin shows and events in order to interact with collectors, supported coins like the 2017 P Mint Cent, and the West Point America the Beautiful Quarters, just to name two of his successful programs. Now, Not everything was a huge success. The 2017 Enhanced Uncirculated Coin Set was met with frenzied enthusiasm, and then it crashed and burned when thousands of orders were canceled or returned because people just didn't like the product. Yep, yep. I remember that very well. Limited mintage products and a bulk purchaser agreement was likely the last straw for collectors. So, you know, products which were mint staples, like the Proof Silver Eagles, uh, silver proof sets became limited mintage products without any explanation as to why. Yeah, and then worse, were sold out in a matter of minutes in the middle of a workday, shutting out longtime collectors and creating a flipping frenzy for basic items. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? I- I'm sitting here looking at this story and looking at the picture of him, and the picture of him in his face, it kind of looks like he's like, "Eh, I tried." <laughs> they picked a very interesting picture for him. Definitely not even going to say anything because it's, you I know, tried. it's just too easy. <laughs> it's too easy. Oh, geez. Too political. Yeah. So, yeah, we try to shy away from that. But, you know, I mean, that said, um, but if that's not bad enough, the special releases of the time were even worse. You know, between the Morgan and the Peace Towers, the designer sets, both silver and gold, and the reverse proof eagle sets, all I can say is enough is enough. Yeah, buddy, I agree with that. So that said, it is likely this pressure that drove Mr. Ryder to resign. We will see if if the problems are resolved by the new acting mint director more to come. We shall see. Right. We'll have to see. 
Um, you know, so I, I am trying to be as fair as I can, even though I probably, you know, voiced as much of a, a protest, you know, against what he was doing as anybody else. But I do want to be fair in, in saying that, look, you know, it's not the first time he did it. There were some circumstances that were, you know, I mean, just wildly out of his control. Yes. Yeah, that's true. But some of it was of his own, own making, I believe. So, Absolutely. And make me curious personally as to what the motives were behind doing it. Yeah, I agree. So speaking of the new acting mint director, Allison Dune will replace Ryder in the interim as acting mint director. Hopefully, another full-time director will be appointed soon. I would not, however, expect that of Ms. Dune. She appears, at least from her resume, to be more of a financial officer than a director. Okay, well. So, you know, I mean, the skills generally expected of a mint director include marketing and PR on a grand scale. And with this in mind, there's no better temporary guardian for the mint director's position, as she'll understand the monetary aspects of the mint business. And I hope that she'll review the current bullion pricing structure, as I believe that it has become just absolutely antiquated compared to the other mints of the world. I doubt much is going to change for the, the time being. I think until somebody actually gets appointed as the mint director, I don't expect much to change. It is typically not going to change right. by somebody who's in an interim position. However, I'm just saying that she has a, a real financial nose, right? That's that's where she's been sure. her entire career. I think that I think that there's a major problem with the U.S. Mint just in the way that they distribute bullion. Let's take gold, for example. Yeah. Instead of a flat rate like most of the mints around the world charge, you know, like Canadians and and uh, you know the Royal Mint and the the Perth Mint, the U.S. Mint charges a percentage. Yeah. And because of that, the premium on gold eagles just start getting really, really obnoxious. Yeah. When I, they don't have to be. Yeah, that's and true. They were basically put into place when gold was three hundred fifty dollars an ounce. Yeah. So in that, you know, in that regard, it's like that and the anti counter or the anti uh, money laundering statutes and stuff like that. I think they all need to be reviewed just for proportion to what is going on in the world now. That sounds like a pr- job for the next Mint director. I don't think Miss well, uh, Dune is, is going it, to. It might be something for a financially oriented interim to point out to the incoming director. That might be possible, but again, I don't think you're going to see any kind of sweeping reforms happen until somebody permanent gets into the uh, gets into the position. Well, I mean, think about how long it went before Ryder got into I that know. position. It was vacant for a long time before that. Yep, I know. I know. No. So, the coin collecting community on Facebook scored a major victory. Oh, I saw this. This is really cool. According to the Anti Counterfeiting Educational Foundation, Facebook has become the platform of choice for fraudsters and scammers in search of unsuspecting victims. The ACEF, in association with the ACTF, so that's the Anti Counterfeiting Educational Foundation, in association with the Anti-Counterfeiting Task Force, have published a list of, quote, red flags that will help identify fraudulent ads. And the Coin Week article gives us a review of these and other tips for identifying bogus websites that might belong to scammers. It's gotten really bad, and I'm glad they finally did something about it. I spend quite a bit of time on there, um, just in my everyday. But, uh, the it, man, I would see two or three of them a day some days, and they were obviously you know, targeted towards people that aren't collectors that just wanted to have something cool and old. And man, they were just, they were horrible. I saw one that actually used pictures of people that we knew, um, you know, like real people in the coin business and it wasn't them selling it. So, I mean, they, they don't really care. They're, they're just yeah. wanting to sell their counterfeits any way possible. So, and, and what was really odd was that they'd use pictures of real coins. They, you know, I mean, they would give very, very real looks to this. But, I mean, anybody with any knowledge of the way the market works with these coins knows yes. that they they just don't sell for under melt. Right. I mean, oh, yeah. It gets high. And, you know, I mean, that's a different story. But, but I mean, when melt is 20 bucks, you're not going to get them for 10. It just doesn't happen like that. It doesn't matter how many of them they've bought. It doesn't, you know, yeah. I mean, there's, there's no, no way they can sell them for that. It just doesn't happen. And the, so, I feel really bad because we get people that bring them in the office all the time, unfortunately. And that's the number one or two place where they get those fakes is, is Facebook. So be careful. 
So, you know, the anti-counterfeiting task force is uh, something that does some really, really, I mean, yeoman's work in, the, in this regard in trying to help do that. But I think it's really cool that, uh, that actual collectors, that, that us, people on the Internet, uh, had an influence on shutting down some of this when seemingly Facebook had no interest. They don't care. They All they want to do is sell ads. That's all they were about. They didn't do any. And, and the thing is, checked. you know what the, the really weird thing about this whole situation is? Their platform actually banned the sale of numismatics. Gold bullion, silver bullion, and collector coins are actually not even allowed to be sold on Facebook. Right now they kind of turn a blind eye to the groups that sell them. But in their terms of service, it is actually written that you're not allowed to sell these things. So... Uh, uh, why would they sell them ads, you know, if they're not even allowed to, to be posted on their platform in the first place? I don't know. And yet they, they foster groups with that interest. Yeah. And they, yeah. So, and there's all kinds of groups where you actually can sell and buy and stuff. Like right, that. right, right. There are definitely plenty of, of great groups it's on Facebook that. that you can do business yeah. safely, but. But Facebook is all about the money and I think they're pretty bald faced about that. And that's, yeah. that's scary. Yeah, I agree. Because it seems to not matter to a lot of people. Yeah, I agree. I think we should be hair on fire about it. That's just me. <laughs> you ain't got much you left know, to be on fire, friend. Pardon me? <laughs> you said be hair on fire, and I said you don't have that much left to be on fire, so you better be careful. I do. I, do. I, I have plenty. Remember, it was, it was pink last year. I know. I'm just messing with you because you're yeah. old. Well, old I am. That, that you can mess with me. The United States Mint has also released the 2021 circula uncirculated mid set. 2021. Wait, 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 I skipped one. Oh, I'm you sorry. did? I was going to say, yeah. what are you doing here, friend? released the limited edition silver proof set American Eagle Collection. This just seems like another way to sell coins for a lot of money that aren't really worth it. Yeah, this set was bound to be different from last year, right? There's only two quarters this year. Yeah. With two types of silver silver eagles, there actually is more silver in this year's set. Yeah, I mean, but again, it's like that's I've never even seen one of these. Have you even ever seen one of these? When we buy one of these, we turn around and we dump it on eBay and we make huge money. I've never even seen one come in, so that tells you they have basically the silver coins. They don't have the nickel or the or the cent. Uh, they have the basically the silver coins and a silver eagle in them. And uh, they sell for like eighty-five to one hundred and fifty bucks. Meh. That's how I feel about them. Meh. Just buy a proof set, get a couple of eagles. You know, no need to make these weird fancy sets. I agree. I mean, this set. You know, there is, there's nothing exclusive in this set. Absolutely nothing. No, it's just a bunch of coins you can get in other sets. In the right. set. And what else is more is uh, besides the more more silver in it is the two hundred and thirty five dollar price tag on the set. This Yikes, time. bikes! That's a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you know, here we go. That's what I was talking about, though. With you know, maybe this new mint director because silver dropped. Right. Maybe they <laughs> silver dropped. Maybe they'll start making less sets. That'd be cool. I don't care how many. <laughs> Look, it's twenty one dollars. It's twenty two dollars an ounce. Why are you selling this stuff for? You know, there's two less than three ounces of silver in this I, set. You know the answer. I do because they can't. Because we they won't can. get into that joke again. No, we won't. But that's the truth. The United States Mint has also released the 2021 Mint uncirculated set. That's so, why I was. I was just trying to avoid the bad news of the other one. <sighs> okay, so we have mint sets. Back to back to the basics. Awesome mint yeah, sets. So how long are they going to continue to make these mint sets? Yeah, uh, I would hope they continued in, in perpetuity making these sets. As long as we make coins, they should make mint sets. Well, I mean, you would think so. I I personally hope so as I collect them. But, you know, a total of 14 coins this year at a cost of twenty five ninety five. Yeah, I mean, that's a little better, right? Okay. So the coinnews.net article says, like it's, like it's a sales pitch, the same price as last year's set, which sold out and has reported sales of 211,788. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what they sold. That That's popular. There's a lot more people out there that collect mint sets. Yes, but uh, it seems that they have been waning every year. There are fewer and fewer of them made every single year. Last year, they made 200,000 of them, figuring, okay, you know, this should be enough to last us a year. 
And because of the pandemic, you know, people bought a lot of stuff, and so they sold out, and then they didn't go back and make any more. So it'll be you know, I don't think that they sat down at the beginning of the year and said, "Hmm, let's limit the number to two hundred eleven thousand seven hundred and sixty. <sighs> that seems like a good number." Yeah, I mean, it'll be t- it'll be telling to see this year the sales versus last year. Twenty twenty was a weird year. Twenty twenty one's been kind of weird. But it yep. uh, should be interesting to see if they sell more or less or about the same this year. Well, I mean, they're they're not releasing them until October this year, right? Yeah. Well, the very end of September last year, I think they came out in, like, August, maybe yeah. September. Just in time for the holidays. That's good timing. Yeah. Well, I, I, look, I collect them. I'm one of these dopes that actually does purchase these things every year. But I just don't like the idea of them, you know, leaving the price at twenty five ninety five when you've got six less coins this year. Yeah, they, they again. I think it's not about the coins themselves. It's about the set itself. It's about about the product of the set, not necessarily what's in the set. It's it's a widget to them. Well, oh, it definitely is. But I, I don't know. Their marketing strategy has just got me in the dark. So let's step off the U.S. Mint's neck just for a moment <sighs> and move on to the world of news, uh, the world of world coins. There you go. Mexico will release 2021 dated proof Libertads this year to mark the 40th year of their release. Awesome. Now, do you see a demand for Libertads, Matt? Uh, I mean, I like them. I don't have people banging down the doors asking for them, but I like the coins. I think they're pretty. I mean, we have people who buy them when they see them in the case, but right. very few people asking for them on the phone. Yeah, we don't have anybody calling saying, are you going to order any Libertad? No, we're, we don't get that. Yeah, 50 pesos, different story altogether. Sure, yeah. Well, it's yeah 1.204 but, but ounces yeah. of gold, friend. Well, well exactly. <laughs> These coins coincide with the bicentennial of Mexican independence. Cool. And the Mexican government will issue bimetallic circulating 20 pesos uh, to commemorate the event. So it's a circulating commemorative. Um, kind of cool. They're okay. Yeah, I mean, I I like that they make the same coin in different sizes. That's kind of cool. You know, they have the, uh, uh, oh, I, I jumped onto the next coin here, the Bicentennial Medal. But I like that they, they go back to the Libertads, uh, and they make the, the different sizes. I mean, they make them in, in like, a, what is it, 1 20th, 1 10th, 1 quarter, 1 and 2? 5, 10. Do they make 5 and 10 still? I know they, they did. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, here they go. They, they, they're going... Um, Okay, so they have the they make five ounce, two ounce, one ounce, half ounce, quarter ounce, tenth ounce, twentieth ounce. That's what they're making this year. The so. one ounce they're going to make six hundred thousand. The rest of them under fifteen. Yes. So anything but the one ounce is going to be scarce coin. The one ounces because they're most most popular. I'm sure. Uh, right. That's that's why. So anyway, I'm sorry. You can jump on back to the, uh, well, the no, bicentennial medal. Up. I just wanted to say that they they line up with the uh, with the Mexican bicentennial, uh, which did not happen on May fifth. Just to be clear. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just like the newness of a new Mexican coin, the fact that they went to a bimetallic coin, and that it's a circulating commemorative. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a cool-looking coin. Speaking of which, Australia will issue a 50 pence com- uh, Christmas decoration coin. What is that? Well, see, truthfully, it's not what I expected either, but when you think about it, Christmas is completely different in the Southern Hemisphere. That's true, it's warm. Right, so I have friends in Australia and have heard them say they just can't think of Christmas without thinking about going to the beach. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. It, you know, it's the middle of the summer December. down there, so. Summer things, so, you know, as they should, because December is midsummer down under. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I can see that. But this design is just one that I can't quite figure out what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's some sort of allegorical beach thing, maybe. I don't or, know. or a, or a wedding cake. I'm not quite sure. That's kind of the thing. Is, <laughs> is it looks like the fringe of a garment, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, a wrinkle in it. It's got uh, uh, maybe it's, it's on got fire. I don't, I don't know. Beadwork or something like that. Oh. It definitely <laughs> doesn't convey. It, I definitely don't look at that and think, "Oh, yep, that's Christmas. That's that's yeah, Christmas." Yeah. My first thought when I had a, when I heard a Christmas coin was, "Oh, okay, here's something else that they can market to the rest of the world." And right. I don't think that's going to be the case here. I don't think so either. Yeah. All right. So back to bashing the U.S. Mint. All right, let's go. We had to give them a standing eight count, but now we're back to them. So for <laughs> unknown reasons, the U.S. Mint is striking twenty twenty one half dollars for circulation. Why not? Yeah, they, they've. I, 
I don't know what they're thinking. Maybe this is David Ryder's final middle finger to everybody on his way out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, as my last executive order, I'll be signing this that uh, you have to make half dollars for circulation again. Bye. I mean, it's like, a, <laughs> I just don't know. I mean, it, it's like what the article in, in Coin Week talks about is is maybe, you know, because of the lowered buying power of the quarter dollar that people will start automatically moving to halves, which have just not circulated, uh, won't work in vending machines. Yeah, make vending I, machines take them, you might have a chance. I think that's the biggest problem right there is they won't work in vending machines. So they're just not going to circulate. There's no, there's no place in a drawer for them in nope. a bin. Yep. Nope. I don't know. It's just not going to happen. I mean, there's a lot of things they have to do to make these coins circulate and there, none of that is in place. So it's just not going to happen. The coin week article compares these to, you know, well, maybe they'll, they'll get some uh, initiative from, uh, to spur collector interest, you know, like the 2019 or 2020 W Westman America. No, that's, they're not going to be anything like that. With, once just, they it, stop putting them out into circulation, people stop collecting the circulating coins. They stop collecting uncirculated Kennedy halves. I mean, you only have them out, you know, it, not in circulation. You can only get them in rolls, for, oops, sorry, straight from the mint. I mean, yeah. And there's a very, very concentrated audience for those. I couldn't even tell you what, years that they when they last put them out in circulation i don't even know oh, it was 1996 96 so 96. ever since 1996 up until 2000 yeah, 25, 20, 25 well, years later they just said you know what guys yeah, we, we could put them out there and people collect them yeah yeah let's put them back out why not no 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 so you know i wonder what the what they're going to do with all the halves when the banks don't order them Maybe they'll go and sit in storage with the over one billion dollar coins. In storage. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe the post office, um, like stamp machines, were running low on change. You know, maybe that's it. So the treasury currently boasts a reserve of one point zero one one billion with a B dollar coins, which, in all fairness, is down from the twenty twelve total of one point four four billion. But the current s- supply seems to decrease by approximately four million coins a month. And at that rate, we won't need to mint anymore for about twenty years. Where where are they sending these four million coins? Is my question. Like, what is happening to them? Nobody uses them. Do they I mean, go? Oh, I mean, I guess oh, the you know it's, they're, they're they're supplying banks with them and post office machines. Apparently, yeah, I um, guess. the only time I, I ever mean, see them is when I go to Chicago and have to pay the tolls. Sometimes they spit them back out, or they hand them to you when you give them change, or well, when they give the you change. The only place you'll get them is from a machine. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I've it, had people hand them to me from the, the, the booth attendants. Like you give them a five, they give you two coins and a quarter. Do we, don't, we haven't done that since the pandemic anymore. Oh, well, that, yeah, it's been. Anymore. Yeah, well, okay. But, but, you know, it's, it's so you're talking about the four million per month that seemingly goes someplace. Think about this. Do the math. There are approximately 160 million people in the United States. Yep. <laughs> That's one for every 400 people wow. a month. Uh, it's that's probably about right. That's nuts. <laughs> I never thought about it like that, but yeah, that's nuts. we go through. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so so we don't have too much passive aggressive Mike tonight. Um, Numismatic Guarantee Corporation is now Numismatic Guarantee Company. I didn't see this story. Huh. Any idea why, Matt? Um, I mean, I'm sure it has to do with the sale of of the corporation, you know, to the investors that bought it. I'm sure that, uh, I mean, there's, there's always a reason that a corporation makes a change like this. The type of change might make a difference in like the rules under which they file taxes, something like that. But in this case, especially, you know, NGC, their name is their brand. Now NGC, you know, has become the abbreviation under which they're known and that won't change. But you know, when your name is your brand, yeah, I don't understand what could be so important about the difference between core corporation and company yeah i don't know that's a good question uh, i'm not quite sure why i'm sure it had something to do with the, the purchase of the company i'm just not quite sure why or what what that was okay so this was part of that bigger you know corporate uh collector's universe thing no no no. collector's universe was bought by a different company um but uh, ngc was bought by an investment company as well so uh okay so it probably does it probably 
fits into the the corporation that they see. Don't I look stupid though? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it's just. Just one of those things. I'm sure it just has to do something legal schmeagle that's really probably pretty boring, and that's why they're doing it. But for yeah, us, as coin nerds, it's up. like, oh, yeah. Well, like, well, why'd they change it then? Right. An 1831 capped bust proof quarter dollar will come up for auction this month. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, this is one of the earliest proof coins minted by the United States. Proof coins to this point consisted of presentation coins made for heads of state, like the King of Siam set in 1834. Yep. And so they're really, really rare. Um, bidding for this coin has already reached over six figures, according to Coin Update's article. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the, these are the kind of coins that have a mintage of, like, five. I mean, it's just, it's insane. So, Well, and it's an absolutely beautiful coin. It's proof 66, and it's nearly 200 years old. Yeah, it does look very nice in the pictures, but... That little blue on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of purdy. Oh, it's kind of purdy. He got a purdy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so finally wow. in the news. I am taking this, this show someplace different tonight, aren't I? You really are. Coin Week published an article in which Q. David Bowers tells us the story of early pattern U.S. coins. Okay. So this story takes place in early America under the article's confederation, or as I like to call it, USA 1.0. Yep. Um, you know, this was our first iteration. We were still figuring out how to do the business of being our own nation and all the growing pains that went with it. Mm -hmm. So in 1783, the f uh, one of the first pattern coinages was struck, and this consisted of a five-unit piece, a 100-unit piece called the bit, a 500-unit piece called the quint, and the 1,000-unit piece called the mark. So it was like a, it was like a prototype. I mean, a pattern, of course, but well, this was prototype this was coinage the system. Nova Constellatio patterns, and so on the on the reverse, they have the or on the obverse. I'm sorry, they have the all-seeing eye surrounded by rays and stars with the Nova, the legend Nova Constellatio, and the reverse has the legend Libertas Justicia, 1783 a wreath, and then it has the denomination inside. Huh. I mean, that, that's pretty darn cool. But this story is actually even cooler, and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to tell the story. I want to direct people to the Coin Week article if they're interested in reading it. But in 1783, uh, they were struck, and this consisted of these pieces, right? Now the pieces became property of Charles Thompson, who was secretary of the first, I think it was the Continental Congress at that point. His property was willed to his nephew, who found two of these coins in the drawer in the desk. Huh, that's cool. So they were kept until he died, and sub subsequently he willed them to his son, Samuel E. Thompson, and passed them through other hands until 1872 when they were sold to the well-known dealer of the time, John Hazeltine. Okay. And the coins were very well preserved, and only two quints and one mark are known to exist today. Wow, that's cool. That is a cool story. Cool story. Yeah, cool stories. Cool story, bro. Cool story, bro. I like I like stories, and uh, I managed to get that one in without even ruining the story. You should go to <laughs> coinweek.com, and you should read that one. It's that's it's great. Don't wait for the movie. <laughs> Don't wait for the movie, folks. So that was the news, and the news was brought to you tonight by Clocks. Helping the world keep time for over eight centuries. They're versatile. They're wonderful. But own more than one, and you'll never really know what time it is. Even a broken one is right twice a day, and what else can you say that about what else can you say that about? We're clocks. We're clocks. You're listening to the Coin Show Podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. And this won't uh, star Mike's fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I I think that this real deal segment we've been doing has been great. What do you think? Oh, it was definitely fun. I think we got a lot of really good feedback from it. Yeah, I think so too. So I think a lot of people liked it. Um, I th as soon as you mentioned it, people started liking. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. So give that. me just a second here. Get my program up. Well, I'll tell you what. Before we do the real deal, okay. Why don't we give something away? You want to give something away? What do you want to give away? Oh, oh yeah. Well, that's true. Month. I didn't yeah. uh, grab the names off the friends of the Facebook group. So why don't you go in there while we're sitting here? We can talk for a sec. 
go through, and I'll just you just scroll and I'll tell you when to stop. And that one that your mouse is on will be the winner. How's that? Live cool. on the spot, bingo cool. bango. Let's do it. Let's do that. So Facebook, go to Friends of the Coin Show podcast. Wow, what an awesome group. Yeah, I know. I love that group. Where do I find the members? Joined? No. It should be up towards the top somewhere. Oh, let's see. Rooms, topics, more. Members. There we go. There we go. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, just start scrolling. You scroll away. We're going to give away a 2021 Silver Eagle right here. Right here. Here it is. It's in my hand. Get to the list. Bingo, bango. Uh, let's see. Flip, ready to go. Yeah, moderators, friends. Do you want me to do it? No, I think I got it. All right, all right, all right go ahead. Just scroll, I'll just scroll. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of people in that group. Let's just let oh. you scroll, scroll, scroll. Stop. Ah, Russell Franks. Russell Franks. All right. <sighs> nice. Yes. You scrolled right to Russell Franks. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> of course. Russell Franks. No, that's good. That, that'll that work. Cool. Well, you know what? We're not done giving things away yet. I don't think I got more so, stuff. Uh, a one ounce Silver Eagle. 2021. Uh, 21. Yeah. Uh, courtesy of the Coin Show. Yeah. And the patrons of the Coin Show podcast. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Thank you guys for thank you. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for everything you do, and, and we're more than happy to uh, be able to give this stuff away. It's really cool. Yeah. So let me see if I've broken this program. I might have broken this. So hold on a sec. Yep, I did. One second. I'll be right there. I gotta get my program up. I know this is for you guys that are live. Hey, thanks for for uh, hanging out with us. I got a, for my, my technical difficulty here, here we go. I think I got her. There we oh, go. Yeah. All right, Mike. Rock about your baby. Why don't you give me, well, let's go back to us. We're going to, we're going to make this into a segment all of its own anyways. So let's go back to us on the show here. Why don't you just give us, oops, see, look what I did. I, I, I messed it up all the way. It's okay. I'm getting there. Wee. There we go. Oh. All right, now we're back. So why All don't right. you throw me just a meatball opening to this, and then we'll, we'll take it and go from there. Yeah, because... Uh... All right. So, Matt, one of the um, more interesting coins in the Indian Headset series yep. is the 1877. Mm-hmm. It is a key date, really, really valuable, yep. and yet super, super easy to authenticate. It is. It's one of the easiest coins out there to authenticate. And let's uh, let's take a look at one, and I'll show you how you can tell if yours is genuine. Get this pulled up here. Here we go. So in front of us, we have an 1877 Indian head scent. Uh, this coin is in an AU55 holder, I believe. Thank you, PCGS, for use of your pictures again. Um so the thing with 1877 Indian head pennies and, and what makes this so easy to authenticate is they only had one reverse die pair. They had a couple of different obverse die pairs, but the reverse is how you authenticate an 1877 Indian head scent. So what you, what you want to look at is you go right into the middle of the reverse here and you want to see some weakness in the bottom of this top end and the top left side of this bottom end. And they call these the shallow ends. And in the 1870s, the 1877 Indian head scent is the only one that has these shallow ends. So that's the easiest way to tell that your coin is genuine. There are some other ways. Uh, most of the die pairs of 1877 uh, have the second seven just a pinch lower than the first seven. Uh, and also the shape of the sevens. You want to look at these serifs here to see the, the serifs, the side of the sevens, to see that they're nice and square. You want to see them straight up and down uh, because what you see most commonly with 1877 Indian head sense is they will actually take other dates and change them to sevens. Uh, most popularly, you see them take 1879s and change them to 77s. 
uh, or sometimes they will change both of the digits to make them uh, appear to be uniformed. But the, the shape of those two digits is the second way to tell it's real. But the first way, check out that center of the back. It's really, really easy. Once you see it, you'll never forget it. And actually, most of the Indian head pennies in the 1860s um, have that same shallow end. Uh, you know, the 1866, 67, 68, 69, they all have that shallow, weak in uh, reverse. So if you can even look at those and kind of tell what you're supposed to be looking for. Now, there's only a hint, though. I was reading about this a little bit today just to make sure that I covered everything. And one thing I did read was that they um, they do have some examples out there of these coins that don't have the shallow ends. And that was from when the die was just really, really early on. Uh, apparently it hadn't, uh, it hadn't kind of got to this point yet. So there's about a half a dozen examples known that don't show the typical shallow end reverse, but all the other coins out there you're going to see look just like that. And I want to add just a couple of things to this because Please I do. think it's really good information. The, the date on the 1877 is really one of the most important places to look there. You're going to see so many of these that have altered dates yep. and that they've taken, you know, either an 1887 coin or 1897 coin and tried to make the nine into a seven or an 1870s coin and tried to make the last digit into another seven. And the consistency with the way that these sevens look on a genuine coin is generally not there when people alter the the numbers and the date, except when they alter both of them, as you mentioned, and then they still look crude and they don't quite look the same. The The roundness at the bottoms of them are also really important and mm -hmm. something that people miss when when they're creating this from a, from a fantasy die. And here's what I think, um, and you may disagree with me on this, but this is just me pontificating. You're talking about there are, you know, less than two dozen examples known with a strong reverse, right? Yeah, there's not and, very many. Right. And there are also proofs known of this date. And yes. the proofs do not have the weak reverse. And they could very well be circulated proof. The, the strong reverse ones are not made from a proof die. I think the strong reverse ones actually came from later in the year when they replaced the reverse die before they went into set. Uh, 1878 it's possible but yeah that's, that's just a supposition on my part because you see the weakness progressing from the 1860s into the 70s and then in 1877 it gets really bad yeah well and it gets so bad that every single one of them has this just really really horrible you know and it's in the very center of the coin yes so this is you know the hardest part of the coin to fill this is the you know definitely the high point of the center uh of the reverse and so that you know coupled with with the fact that it had progressed for a while makes me think that they actually changed the die late in the year and struck very few coins for it's them. entirely possible it's also entirely possible that those strong um in coins could be circulated proofs um you know it, it... they could be, but but for the most part i think they've they've shown diagnostics on them where they're not made from the proof dies oh, well there you go I, it depend on your coin yeah that's true so anyways, guys, that's it. That was really easy. That's how you tell if your 1877 cent is genuine. I'll tell you what. Tell me what. Well, I don't think I've ever seen one quite this nice as the one that you have in the picture from I, PCG does. I try to pick nice well, examples. You know, I try to pick coins that are nice. Is, and most of them that I see are really worn. Oh, most and of them. On this, uh, I mean, the, the high grade of this specimen, that reverse is the way it is. Yes, yes. I didn't want to pick one that was too high because, I mean, I was looking at examples in 66 that still had it, but you kind of want to pick a coin somewhere in the middle because most of the ones you see are going to be circulated. I, uh, I've i probably owned maybe 20 of them this year, and I think the highest grade we had was a VG. So it's like, you know. Um, so, it's kind of like the 16D in XF. You look at it and you're like, yeah, right. It looks weird. I was thinking, and, and I, I was, again, I was doing a little reading on that. And I also read that they think that the mintage of like 280 something thousand might be high because if that one single reverse die struck all those coins, uh, it 
would have shown a lot more wear and tear than this particular die did. So they actually think that that number might not be right. They think it may be inflated. Be lower than that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, it's it's the second rarest date uh, by mintage. 1909S is a little bit rare, but people in the 1870s were not collecting coins the way they were, uh, you know, after the turn of the century. Well, so, not only that, but you also have the tradition of people saving the last of an old thing right, and right. versus a new thing, 09S being the last of the uh, ending heads. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, cool. I hope you guys learned something. We're going to keep doing this. We'll find out something cool next time, and we'll bring it to you. So, I hope you enjoy this segment. Mike, sir, are you ready to get to their coolest thing? I am always ready to All right. get their things. Let's get there. Let me let me make sure I have this one pulled up right too, huh? I, I love looking at this stuff. Oh, hello. Let's see. I think I can actually go and look at this. I know. Stuff. Taking a this is gonna be a heavy edit show. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> you gonna take my fingers out of the beginning? Maybe. Is that friends or is it on? Uh, it's just... on friends. It's always on friends. Friends of the coin show on Facebook. Show your coolest thing. Yeah, let me get it pulled up here because for some reason I have no idea how. I just decided I was going to oh. close everything out. Yeah, That's okay. Right. We'll get there. I'm here. I'm here. Let's see. As always, as always, Isaiah Hageman leads off. The oh, slide. hold on. I'm not there yet, friend. I'm I mean, getting there. He's taking pride in. Being the first one. Yep. Hold on. Man, sorry, everybody. I'm having some major issues this evening, and it is all my fault. It's not all me tonight. No, no, no it's no. it's You're not. Fine. It's not. I'm making a train wreck out of this thing tonight anyway. Although I think we sound probably better than we have ever. It's possible. Here we go. All right. Coming in hot. Now you guys see how I put all this together, too. All oh. at the same time. All right. Here we go. Okay. Bam. All right. Your coolest thing. Your coolest thing. Let's check this out, you guys. So let me get it pulled well, up here. Isaiah. Boom. And he says, by now Matt should know, I'll be the first one on here posting. That's uh, true. So far, so good. He's taking pride in that. So here's an 1834 Plane 4 Half Eagle. For your viewing pleasure, I got it for an absolute steal of a price, so it's a personal collection item. I mean, come on. You know, anytime you get 1830s gold... I love classic heads. That's one of my favorite types of U.S. gold. Yeah. Um, just, just there's just something about that design. I really like it. it. It's kind of you know the the similar design to the large scent, which I also like. You know, it's just just neat. Yeah, and they only made the large scent that looked like that for a couple of years. Yeah, and then yeah. They went to the head. I like this head. I like this design. Let's see if he posted a picture of the back. Oh, and as uh, if he didn't. Uh, didn't lead off with one. Let's lead off with two. Go for it. He says, uh, oh, and to beat Jack Young to showing off his amazing counterfeits, here's a group of PCGS fakes from Asia to include a fake PCGS storage box. Wow. I've never seen that. Well, I've never seen a box like that. No, me neither. <laughs> weird. That is weird. It's amazing what you guys collect. I really like seeing this stuff. Dave Nelson has a crusty Albany Kamem. Ooh, that's a cool one. That's one of those ones that was stuck into the um, the original the holders that have these these uh, little tabs that kept them in. Have you ever seen those before? I'm thinking of of like these black uh, slide. No, no, no. They they were uh, kind of like a cardboard thing, and they had a little piece of cardboard that went across the middle, and you slide the coin in and out. Uh, okay. And it, it's uh, maybe not cardboard is the right word, but it was like a piece, heavy piece of paper, kind of almost. So uh, the tab protected it from toning, and all the rest of it toned. Yep. Really. Yep. Yes, yep. sir. Huh. Cool. Neat stuff. Let's see. Joe Bohannon says, "Got this from Ben the Coin Geek at the A and A show." Hey, Ben, and hey, Joe. Uh, PCGS yep. Proof sixty five Cameo. Love the toning. I like the Tony too. I love cameo barber barber quarters, barber halves, barber dimes, barber barbers, barber barbers. 
Barbara Barber. That's a pretty coin too. That's a, that's kind of how I like those coins to look. Um, you know, with that that kind of electric blue on the outside coming into the little bit lighter colors. Um, I really like that coin. Let's look at the back of it here. There she blows. About the same. Very nice. Very nice. I love proof barber coinage. Mark free, really nice. J.R. Preston, I've been in the market for a problem-free 18th century coin for years. I stumbled upon this specimen. Common date, 1798 hairstyle 2, draped bust large scent. Bought it off eBay. Paid more than I wanted to for one of these, but it was well worth it. Uh, 1798 is one of the... I'm sorry. Now it's his oldest U.S. minted coin that he owns. Seventeen ninety eight large cents are fun. They they are one of the more common dates to get, uh, but there are so many different dye varieties of these, and there are actually some rare ones. Uh, so it's kind of like uh, the the best of both worlds. There's a lot of variety, but it's also rel- most of them are relatively uh, affordable. So good place to start if you're thinking about doing early American copper. It's a, the uh, seventeen ninety eight large cent. Just a pro tip there. Absolutely. And Hercules. Let's see what Kirk has to say. Maybe not a coin, but this is me three weeks ago. After 30 years, this was my last cigarette at six bucks a pack. Hey, man, congratulations. I know it's hard to quit. The struggle is real. Yes, sir. Good to see that. Hope you're holding up well. Absolutely. Now you have more money to buy coins. That's awesome. Jim Barlow. Uh... Not sure how long ago I got this, but I dig these. Looks like it's uh, an 1853 halftime. Nice. Oh, halftime. Okay. Yeah, it's a halftime. Tyler Tyson, die I hand engraved last year, rolled elongated. Oh, cool. Nice. So you put COVID 19 mask. That's uh, pretty cool. <laughs> that is cool. I, I like that. I see. And then he shows. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's doing all sorts. He's made making... several of them, he says. Uh, he has an F-bomb one, which is kind of cool. Literally. The yes. F-bomb. Nice. Family friendly show. We can keep it that way with the F-bomb die. Maybe that'll be the sponsor of the next show. F-bombs. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen Hall, my new boon half. Ooh, that's a pretty coin. Uh, not necessarily one of my favorite commandments, but this one's attractive just because of the, the toning. Um, you know, it looks like it's very lustrous, and it has some... Nice original rainbow toning at the top and around the edges on the back. Pretty coin. Pretty coin. I yeah. bet you it's just as pretty in hand, too. Yeah, I'll bet you it looks really nice in hand. I'll bet there is no way the luster shows up on that. Yeah. Uh, my boss checked in, Aaron Burke. Hey, boss. What's up? Today for a client. This he bought from the Spink Auction. So this was a uh, a gold pattern. You're, oh, you're not going to give us any more about it? I don't know anything well, about that. Uh, thing. I really don't know anything about it, but here, hold on a second. I'll pull it up. So there this was, uh, let's see. This was a gold pattern for a groat, 1601 after Nicholas Hilliard. Wow. So this coin sold for 400,000 pounds, which is close to a million bucks. Yeah, well, that's a bunch of money. Yeah, it is. It's probably, probably like, eh, it's probably like 600,000 US. Yeah. Um, so it's the seventh issue pattern in gold for a groat. Uh, let's see this coin breathtaking canon of tuner portraiture and most enchanting image of the Elizabethan form struck on coin alignment with a light ochre tone overlying (laughs) quite brilliant fields, extremely fine of the highest rarity with only two recorded in gold. So it's, it's one of two. Wow. That's cool. Super cool. That was a really, really. And it cool. looks like it's graded NGC MS sixty one. Yes. Wow. Not bad for something that's over five hundred years old. Brent Pearson, friend of the show. Hey, Brent, what's happening? Says my coolest thing is a spy coin I bought from spycoins.com. dot uh, Brian makes them by hand in Montana. They have been featured on NCIS, NCIS Los Angeles and Bosch. Uh, the CIA and KGB use secret compartment spy coins during the Cold War. Uh, the one Brian makes to hide an SD card. I bought the Ike Dollar and the Nickel. Huh. I would think the Ike Dollar would be way better. Yeah. I mean, that's an it's, interesting use for coinage. I, I knew that they kind of did stuff like that, but. Hmm. Yeah, they machine them, and, you know, now it's CNC machines. I mean, think about the accuracy you could do this stuff with. Yeah, heck yeah. Eugene Kim, after graduating nursing school, I went to Springfield, Illinois, because I'm a mega fan of Abe Lincoln. 
I went to various sites, including his home. The coin I got from the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. It is one ugly coin, but it's cool to me. <laughs> I've been to the Presidential Library, the, the Lincoln Presidential Library in Springfield. It's, it's a really cool place. It's where they had the launch ceremony for the 2009 uh, census. The yeah. Yeah, I remember covering that story. Uh, yeah, that's cool. It's like a challenge coin. You know, it's like a... Yeah, interesting. Really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice and enameled on the reverse. Yeah, that's cool. Presidential library seal. Uh, Tyson Dallas says, I typically only have foreign coins that I acquired incidentally, but I recently purchased this Austra Austrian 25-euro bimetal coin. I really like the design, and then it's made of silver and neo neobium. Is that how you say that? Neobium? I say it. Uh, pretty cool that other countries are minting coins out of unusual metals. Oh, mm. weird. Yeah, that thing is a it's strange color. Is a really weird color, and that's the one that they made with that uh, that steampunk designer. Remember the geared one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm in love with that coin. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. More Martin. This is an advertising token for a Charlie Chaplin movie called The Gold Rush. They were thrown in the streets to promote the movie. Really? Yeah, so creating a mini gold rush. There appear to have been 10 different tokens produced. This one is for the uh, Gaiety Theater in Manchester, commencing 11 January 1926. So I would think that this is in uh, in Britain. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, it looks like they're real gold pieces. That's cool. Uh, Tony O'Neill posts a California half dollar with a hole in it. Gosh darn it. That's a beautiful coin. Yeah, well. Simple bear. Yeah, it really is cool. Uh, Adam says, okay, Matt Dinger won't like this, but I still think it's pretty cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. I really appreciate that. Um, I love the hat uh, the most, but I'll show you my 3D Remembrance coins. Whoa, what? There's a hat, yeah. uh, a poppy, and a... Uh, I don't know what that last one is. Well, it looks like a silver poppy. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I see it now. Wow, silver I was totally point. not seeing that. I was seeing something completely different. Uh, yeah, this is a family show. I know. I'm trying to keep it that way. Sorry. Cool. Ron Dorland. 19, or, uh, 1903, proof 63 U.S. Philippines, uh, 20 centavos. That coin's got some really pretty toning. I like that. Yeah. Funny thing is, is that it doesn't look like the same coin. He shows a true view of it. Yeah. And then it's the slap. It's like, that doesn't look like the same coin. Wow, what a pretty coin. Yeah. Yeah. That, that just shows you sometimes how deceiving pictures can be one way or the other. Who's to say? <laughs> Who knows, my friend? Who knows? Cool. Very cool coin. Uh, let's see here. Warren Kennedy, while in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina on business, found this cutie at a pre-pandemic price, so I grabbed it to join the other high denomination notes I have because they're getting very tough to find at affordable prices. That is very true. We were just talking about that today in the office. Nice. $500 bill. Those guys have gone from about $750 to like $1,500 in the last two years. It's insane hot yes, market a really high demand for them and look at the serial number on this zero zero fourteen fifteen fourteen so <laughs> close. that's cool yeah that's a cool serial number that is a cool ash serial dobbs number. my one and only hammered gold coin france aqdr of king francois the first struck between 1515 to 1546 I wonder what this could buy back. I will tell you, it buy a lot. Oh, I bet, man. That's cool, though. Look at that dragon on the back. Look at how centered it is. Yeah, that's cool. I like those little dragon guys, though. That's my favorite part of that coin. Super cool. Lots of fleur de lis. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see what we got. Malcolm McGaw says, I don't collect many modern coins. Yeah, me neither. Um, I really prefer hammered, but I picked this up for just over face value about 20 years ago. Falcon Islands, 25 pounds is 150 grams and 65 millimeters. So I, so it's a fair hunk of silver with a mintage of only 20,000. Huh, cool. 150 grams. 150 grams. That's five ounce coin. Yep. 31.1 grams in a troy ounce. So yes, sir. Yeah, just under five grams. 
or five ounces. That's a, that's a beautiful coin. Vance Adkins, this is a good four token from the suburb of Cincinnati that I grew up in Deer Park. The Deer Park Inn is still there. Also, I threw in a Star of David Civil War token. Yeah, wow, that's uh, that's cool. Let me let me get to the next one here. I I actually like those. <laughs> and also, I have this eighteen seventy seven Indian head set. Ah, that's, I'm happy to look at coins. Yeah, that's in great shape. That's yeah. a beautiful Civil War token. Yeah, it really is. Neat piece. Dennis Mendoza says nothing but sends us a picture of an 1858 $10 gold piece in AU58 CAC. That is a cool coin. Yeah. Pretty and I coin. think just letting the coin do the talking. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to mic drop and walk away. And, and that's, I think, exactly what Dennis just did. So, that is a beautiful coin. That is a cool coin. There's another picture of it. Oh, no. This is a different coin because why not? You know, mic drop why again. Not? 1846 over 50, uh, 10 in PCGSAU 55 from the, the Harry Bass collection. Yeah. Cool coins. Yeah, very much so. Very, and, uh, oh, yeah. and, and you know what? Why not? Let's drop a third one, Dennis. Look at you. Yeah. Animal. 1852 $10 Liberty, PCGSAU 55 CAC. Again, all three of those coins are tough. If you don't know that series, very, very tough coins. Very tough coins. As always, Jack Young checks in. My latest add to my odd collection is this 1882 Great Britain shilling. PCGS cert is no longer valid as I reported it as the counterfeit it is. Good job, Jack. Gee, Apparently, 1882 was a, was a scarce date for these back in the 70s, and the counterfeits were believed to have been made um, to fill that void. Wow. And now you put up some big pictures courtesy of PCGS coin facts. Yeah, let me scroll to these. Let's take a look here. Oh, weird. Yeah, that's a weird looking coin. I would have questioned that coin too. But you know what? That's just goes to show you guys. The grading companies are not perfect. They miss things. It happens. That's why they have their guarantees. Uh, you know, and he shares a picture of a real one for comparison. Yeah, let me get to this. This this is a fake one. No. This is the fake one, and then let's take a look at a real one here in the side by side. Let me shrink this down a little bit. There you we don't go. have he gives you a side by side. Yeah. Oh, I know, I have it. I'm I'm just trying to get it so that we can look at it together on the on the nose screen out. with everyone. Yeah, the nose is definitely different. If you look on the left hand side, obviously it's kind of curved upwards, whereas on the right hand side it kind of goes the other direction. That's a really easy pickup on that coin. The common Roman bump in the nose. Yep. That's the classic Roman nose. Yep. This one has a uh, ski slope. Wow, that's scary. But, you know, that kind of stuff happens. It's out there, and the grading companies miss it, and it just it stinks. But you know what? Hopefully they uh, – and if Jack wanted to, I guarantee you they would buy that coin back from him. But knowing Jack, it's not going to happen. Yeah, and, I mean, they're so common he found another one in a German coin shop. Wow, look at that. Yeah, so that's the thing. That's the thing with this stuff too sometimes, guys. Yeah, that's that's the thing with this stuff. I mean, you get one guy that makes a bunch of these, you know, thirty years ago, and they're just they turn up everywhere. They turn up all over the place. Sometimes uh, there's definitely U.S. coins like that. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sometimes the counterfeits are collectible. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. But uh, you know, this one looks to be a little bit higher grade, and you can really see the date is is pretty pretty ugly on it too. So hmm, cool. Very interesting. Uh, Sean says, "My dad came to visit for my dad came to visit last week and told me he was bringing a few coins that he had buried them in storage when he was a kid. This is part of what I ended up getting. Cool, three cent pieces. I love it. Yeah, nickel and silver. Yeah, another one of my favorite series, actually. Three cents. You know, I didn't like three cents for the longest time, and I'm starting to really like this three cent nickels." Yeah, they're cool. All the clash marks. Yeah. There are tons of them in that series. Yes, there are. Susan says, this is pretty cool. I think so, too. It's a bull. (laughs) bull. She likes this one, too. San San Luis Obispo, California. Cal Poly. So she must like animals. I've decided. Susan, if you don't like animals and I've got you pegged all wrong, please tell me. But 
I believe you like animals on coins. And if you like animals, like. Just send a like. Um, <laughs> Rich Bottles Jr. Some coins that were smashed by the ra- on the rails by President McKinley's funeral train in 1901. Have you ever seen these before? Um, I've I had a few of these. I've done it. No, I mean never of these. Able to re- find the pennies afterwards. That was always the problem. Right, right. No, I mean, of these particular McKinley pieces, I've actually had a few of these. And uh, the first one I got, I was like, what the heck is this? I'm trying to figure it out. And apparently that was a thing. People would, you know, put a penny on the tracks and then they would take it home and, uh, you know, engrave it as to why it was significant. And so that's what it is. It's their memento of the president as he passed through their city. Yep, 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 yep. Cool. I've seen those before, but but it's funny. I haven't seen one in a long time and that that reminded me of him when he posted it. So uh, thanks, Rich. I appreciate seeing those. Yeah, I mean, they talk about um, the Lincoln funeral train that it took him so long to get from Washington to uh, Springfield, where he was buried, they had to embalm him like three times. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Bob says, bought this great-looking mercury dime about seven years ago from a dealer in Oregon. Uh, it was raw at the time, but he agreed to send it for grading before mailing it to me and adding on that cost of the purchase. He priced it at two fifteen. It came back with full band grade, and he honored the original price. That's a nice. That's a good guy right there. One of my yeah. favorite dealers. I see it as a PCGS price guide of five fifty. One of my better purchases. It's a tough coin in full bands. Thirty one. Any of those dimes in the thirties are tough. Yeah, and sixty five full bands too. That's a that's a nice score. Yeah, heck yeah. And last but not least, Sean Partner closes it out today. Uh, in today's mail, World Silver, nineteen fifty eight, five hundred lira from Italy, and nineteen twenty eight, one skilling from Ireland. Nice. Cool. Very cool. Thank you guys for showing us this stuff. And I, again, I am sorry I had to turn it off a little early. But Look at the engraving on that. On yeah. that uh, that's really pretty. Yeah. You guys go hog wild when I post that thing, and uh, it's just <laughs> it's uh, one of those things that uh, I love that segment, and uh, I just had to shut it off early because I kept looking at them. Man, we're going to be doing this show for four hours if we keep it up. So. Next show, we'll, uh, I'll give you a little more warning when I'm going to shut her down so you can get your stuff in there. So thank you yeah. guys for doing that. I really appreciate seeing that stuff. Thank you for participating. That was really, really awesome. Hey, let's give away Buddy. one more coin. Let's do it. Why not? Sure. Four coins. The, the, the quadfecta. Quadfecta? Quadfecta. Yeah. All right. You scroll this time, and I'll tell you when to I start. can't scroll, friend. I have 18 windows open. Okay. I'm going to stop being lazy, then. Let's see, Friends of the Gold Show podcast. We're going to give away another 21P Morgan. Friends. No. No, you know what, Mike? I got a better idea. We did the Friends thing. Yes. Let's, let's just, let's just. Uh, is here. Yeah, there Somebody you go. Go for it. Why don't you just, uh, let's see. How about everybody that's watching us live right now? Type in the favorite year that your coin was minted. Uh, your your favorite year to collect, if you have one. And if you don't have one, just type in a random year that coins were made. Type them in the chat, you guys. We can see it. And we'll go through and uh, pick out one of those people that typed in a date as the winner of this coin live on the show because we can. That's why. There we go. The years start pouring in. 1904, 1909, 2004, 1982, 1894. 1885, 1945. They're just pouring in now, Mike. You see that? How do you do it? Uh, see, you're uh, you're teaching me. Yeah, I mean, this is just the way. There you go. Look at all these dates. I love it. I love seeing all these dates, you guys. Keep them coming. We'll go for another minute here. Mike and I will just. Uh, Mike, why don't we start doing our thank yous now for the show? So we would like to thank uh, our executive producers, uh, especially tonight, Justin Irvin, for yep. hanging in there, taking care of the stuff on the backside. Um, We'd like to thank uh, Barry Swan, the unnamed source, for uh, for what he does to contribute. Uh, thank you to Ernesto for all of his work on our Facebook page. And uh, let's see, who else am I forgetting? Uh, Justin. Oh, uh, um, 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 Corey. Yeah. Thank you to Corey for 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 his contributions, and uh, thank you to all of you who listened. Yes. We are available on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash the coin show. We are also have a private group. Friends of the Coin Show at uh, facebook.com slash friends of the coin show. Uh, it's a private group. Join join today. 
Uh, you have to ask to get in, but you'll see everything that everybody posts. We really kind of like that group. Uh, we're also available on Facebook, or not on Facebook, on Twitter, at The Coin Show, uh, on YouTube, at The Coin Show, uh, on Instagram, at The Coin Show, believe it or not. Not on and, TikTok. Uh, and uh, let's see. And uh, you can also help support our show by joining us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Coin Show. Uh, if you join at the $5 level or more, you will be uh, you will have access to an other show that Matt and I do on the off weeks from this show. Yep. So if that's not a threat enough, <laughs> if you we'll can't see. get enough of this, you might as well come back for something else, right? You might as well come back for something completely different. And that's not stealing the Monty Python line. It is truly completely different. Is that enough? Pick a number between one and twenty. Uh, eighteen. Eighteen. Got it. Uh, Tim Murphy, you have won this coin. Thank you for participating, you guys. Tell him what he won. You have won a 1921 P. Morgan Silver Dollar in brilliant, uncirculated condition. Beat up condition. (laughs) We will get with you after the show. So, Mike, friend, 193 is in the bag. Man, and we gave them their money's worth tonight, didn't we? We did. We sure as heck did. Oh, we well, put a lot of crap, too, yeah, so yeah, well, it, well, it's okay. What do you do? What do you do? Well, friends, for the Coin Show Podcast, I'm Matt. I'm Mike. And we will see you guys next time on the Coin Show. So long, everybody. You've been listening to the Coin Show Podcast with Matt Dinger and Mike Nottleman. We'll be back soon with another informative and entertaining episode. Meanwhile, you can follow the show on social media at The Coin Show, on Twitter and Instagram, and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash The Coin Show. You can also join their private group. Just search Facebook groups for Friends of The Coin Show and request access. But if you want to take it to the next level and support The Coin Show podcast, you can go to www.patreon.com slash The Coin Show. If you subscribe at the $5 a month level or higher, you'll have access to Not The Coin Show podcasts on the off weeks, as well as other surprises reserved for our patrons. Visit our website at coinshowradio.com or download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Radio, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. This has been the Coin Show Podcast.